Hello, everyone. This is Elsbeth McSorley with MEGA, and I'd like to welcome you all to today's webinar, Building a Resilient and Agile Organization with Enterprise Architecture. Thank you very much for joining us today. We are thrilled to have everyone on the line. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please send them through the questions box on your GoToWebinar toolbar. We will do our best to answer them during the presentation or save them and get them uh, answer them all at the end. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be shared with everyone who registered. So this pretty much concludes the housekeeping items. And now let me introduce you to today's speakers. With you today, we have Yannick Rudloff. He's the Managing Director of Mega North America, along with Nicholas Hastfield. Pre sales, sorry, senior pre sales engineer. So, without further ado, Yannick, I'd like to pass the presentation over to you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, for the introduction. So, hello, everybody. Very nice to see you today. So, the goal of today's session, again, is to review how enterprise architects uh, have a seat to the table when it comes to building a resilient and agile thinking organization. So we have a lot of ground to cover today. We will see uh, a little bit of a method at first with me. So I'm going to introduce it to the topic to you, how we do that, how we achieve that in our method. And then following my presentation, Nick Hatfield will do a presentation for you within our solution called HOPEX to show you how pragmatically we can achieve these results. And as Elbeth uh, said before, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the uh, box, uh, question box in GoToMeeting, and I will be able to address them at the end of the presentation. So a quick forward about uh, Mega and who we are. Maybe some of you don't know us yet. So Mega is a software company selling solutions, tools for enterprise architecture. So we have more than 2,000 customers in the world, a lot of users were present in, in 52 countries, and we've been doing that for, for a while now. So we have a lot of experienced people in our company, so do not hesitate to reach out to us to ask any questions. And we are recognized, you can see here, as leader in Magic Quadrants of Gartner and Forrester. We have uh, Spark Matrix a leader as well. But our greatest pride, I must say, comes from the fact that we have been, uh, for the second time in a row, uh, awarded Customer Choice Award by our customers. So it is not analyst saying that we are a leading tool. It's our customers who said that they like working with us, like working with our tool, with our company to help them achieve success in their enterprise architecture practice. Okay, let's go to the topic. So this topic <clears throat> is about understanding how enterprise architecture will help agility and resiliency. So at first, what I would like to do is to give an overview, a simplified definition, I must say, of agility and resiliency and see how we see it from our angle and understand how we're going to achieve that with our enterprise architecture practice. So first of all, uh, agility, business agility, the way I like to call that, is about speed. Not only, but it's about speed. It's about the ability to respond and pivot to an external event in a timely manner being able to see an opportunity, being able to identify a threat that comes your way, and being able to pivot and being able to have a business agility that will help us get to where we need to be in response to, to that opportunity or to that threat. It, is, uh, it requires an outcome-driven thinking, mainly to understand, with, uh, to, to work with the end in mind and to reverse engineer, I would say, a solution based on that. And it requires to have continuous improvement. The solution that you might uh, build there might be only an MVP, only, only a level one solution. But the goal is to continuously improve that solution and make sure that you evolve in that way. It's also about business advantage and obviously about 
capability innovation. You will see that today we're going to talk about capability a lot, I'm gonna also define that word, but really the goal of business agility for us, for the way we, we want to work with that is about innovating our capabilities to respond to an opportunity that we can see on the market. On the other side, the business resiliency is about resistance. It's about absorbing and responding, again, same word, to an event that can disrupt the business operations. It's about being prepared to an event that you cannot avoid, meaning that something is going to happen. It is not uh, an opportunity in that case. You could see it as an opportunity, but something's going to happen and you need to respond to that. And in that situation, it's about identifying your critical capabilities and making sure that these critical capabilities are managed and that you can absorb that element that will come your way within, uh, I would say, uh, a manner that will sustain the operations and not disrupt the operations. So in two ways, you can see that we talk about speed and resistance, and we're going to see later on that, of course, these two concepts will help each other. They will work hand in hand. Recent event that we have seen uh, working on that, that, that we have seen in that kind of, of realm, of course, is everything that goes to remote work right now, to give you a little bit of pragmatic example. So for instance, uh, we know that remote work is the new norm. When two years ago, uh, we had to all go work from home, we had to be prepared maybe to have to go from 1,000 uh, employees working from home to 5,000, 6,000 for some companies. Is our IT prepared for that? Do we have the volume of connection that, that, that enables that kind of connection? That is what we need to check on our capability map. Bankruptcies, of course, we've seen that related to recent events, we've seen bankruptcies, we've seen people, uh, companies going out of business. Very important to understand that if these are if these are your partners, how will you work in the future to sustain your business? We see that we do a lot more on end transaction. This is the example that Nick is going to take today in his demonstration to uh, to uh, to uh, illustrate a company that cannot anymore have uh, operation with stores and that has to move all these operations to online. Are we ready for that? Is our IT, are our processes ready for that? We're going to talk about that. And of course, cybersecurity to illustrate the fact that if an event comes on a threat, a vulnerability in your system, how do you react? So for, for me, the, the idea, and for Mega, obviously, the, the idea is that resiliency and agility are two forces that would benefit each other. It's two it's two, two, two faces of the same coin in my, in my perspective. In one end, you will have agility that will bring a lot of benefits, but in the adaptation, in, in the ability to be able to adapt to a new context and grab an opportunity, but some capabilities might be undermanaged and might create some gaps in the resilience program. In the other way, the resilience needs to be adaptable quickly to the market changes as well. So the, the, the point of view that we want to take today and the, the, the pain we would like to address today with Nick and to show you how we would manage that is how we do within enterprise architecture to manage these two pieces in balance and making sure that in one way we are resilient, the business works well and we have all plans prepared, but at the same time being agile enough to grab the new opportunities that, that, that could come our way. Adaptation for us is one of the most critical ability, I would say, that a business will have in order to uh, keep in business, but also meaning, I mean, being able to capture new market shares. Um, dealing with sudden disruptions without architecture in place, it is really difficult to understand that if you have a disruption, what will be really uh, I would say, uh, disrupted in a way. That were, what would be broken in the company? What kind of product or services would you want to be able to deliver anymore? What kind of assets are delivering that? So this is very important to suddenly have a, a point of view instantly on the architecture of the company to understand where you are. And 
all of these will enable you to quickly have decision making that will help you make decisions in those moments that are that will be complicated second piece is about bandwidth let's imagine for instance that again we all have to work from home starting tomorrow for many reasons uh, the idea is to understand are we able do we have the bandwidth it process uh, remote workers that will be able to sustain such a change of business model and do we have the environment that will allow the company to succeed uh, to succeed even though you have faced that remote working condition and finally the changing uh, the change of market conditions of course at any point something might happen and you need to be prepared it's about preparedness resiliency is about preparedness so the idea is to understand that you have capabilities and you have to run scenarios on these capabilities you have to be able to uh, test your operating model and to say that for instance if tomorrow i don't i'm done i don't have access to uh, flying anymore i don't have access to my stores anymore how will i be able to uh, to uh, to uh, operate as a company and this is three places where enterprise architects and the models we're going to build will help a lot in understanding the way we're going to, we're going to work and we'll be able to make better decisions based on this. At Mega, we strongly feel that any transformation that can be being more resilient, being more agile, uh, strengthening your, your company on some capabilities, does not work in silos it's not a decision that will be taken by the it only or by the business only or by the data governance team only we strongly feel and we strongly know because we've done that in the past that any businesses should have a connected view connecting the operating models the technologies the data the regulatory compliance and the operational risks that will enable to take an informed decision based on the main points of the company the operating model will dictate how we work. The technology will dictate how we support this operating model. So the technology will play a huge part, a huge piece in the resilience and the agility, but not only. The data view will enable us to understand what do we store, how do we use the data. And tomorrow, if I cannot deliver that service, that product, that data anymore to my customers, how do I do? Regulatory, re regulatory compliance will enable me to define my policies, my, the regulations that will constrain me and my business, and risk obviously will connect all of that to the risk, the threats, the vulnerabilities that can occur, and to test scenario of business continuity planning. What if I have this scenario? What if tomorrow I'm forced to deliver 10,000 uh, uh, transactions online? Am I able to support that or not? This is really where we want to understand that. Drilling down a little bit now into enterprise architecture. The way we have structured our approach in Mega is that business capability will be the center of the approach and mainly what we call business capability planning. So that means that you're going to have a view of your capability. You will be able to define the most critical capabilities based on three main criteria. First of all, the business objectives. Maybe you have defined a business objective in your company that makes a capability necessary because it's, it's where you want to be tomorrow and this is where the business is going to go tomorrow. Second is about customer experience. How do your customer consume your capabilities and are those capabilities consumed at a critical point in the customer journey? And lastly, the value streams. How the capabilities are used, are, are tied together to actually uh, I would say, deliver a service or the product to your customers. And then on the bottom part of the slide, you will find the assets that are used by the capabilities to achieve the result, the applications, the processes, the project. And one key point that we have to understand is that we need to be able to focus on the capability that needs some resiliency, that needs some agility. Not every capability needs to be agile or resilient. Maybe some of them are not, uh, are not worth investing in that, but some of them that are your core business that need some agility, that needs to pivot quickly 
in order to respond to a threat or to, a, to an opportunity, you will need them to be more resilient, more agile, and they would need to be uh, supported by agile application, agile processes, so that if you need to make a quick change on application to capture a new market share or capture a new or pro provide a new set of products, that you can do it very quickly and that then project architecture will help on that. The view that I have here is about agility, agile framework. Very often we think about the fact that enterprise architecture has a vision sometimes that is very high level and that it's not the most pragmatic, I would say, vision of that. I strongly feel against that. I think that agility and resiliency, of course, needs to be managed by enterprise architect from the start. Enterprise architect are there to help define the business roadmap, are there to help define the technology, the requirements, the value stream, the capabilities. They are here to lay the ground for the company to, uh, I would say, to, to, to grow the business on. And they, as enterprise architect, we are responsible to uh, provide these guidelines, these patterns for the solution architect to be able to build the solution architecture, what we call the intentional architecture. I'm not going to go to, into that today, but in order to be, able, to be able to build the intentional architecture, that will really uh, be uh, focused on what do we need. If we need more agility on an architecture, it would be dictated by the business objective and roadmap and by the value stream and the capabilities that we define. And of course, the social architect will then talk to the local dev team in order to provide some good uh, inputs on uh, on how to uh, how to uh, to provide all of that. Okay, so how to get it done? We have a method in Megan that Nick will demonstrate to you in a couple of minutes. This method is based on four phases. The first one is obviously to have an inventory of assets, not everything, but mainly the, the capabilities and their main system supporting the capabilities, and assess these assets. So this is where we want to make connections between application, technologies, processes, customer journey, capabilities, value stream. It does not have to be uh, exhaustive at the beginning. We don't have to boil the ocean to start doing that, but having a capability map that we can provide in our solution out of the box, by the way, you can start building your main connection there and understand, sorry, where you need to focus. And this is really where the assessment of business capability will, will play a critical, critical uh, role. Second is to identify what we call the normal mode and the safe mode. In the normal operation of your business, these are the KPIs that you need to achieve. In normal operation of the business, maybe you need 10,000 transactions uh, per day in, in your stores or online. And in your safe mode, in some point something happens, maybe you need 50,000 transactions online. Are you able to, to achieve that? Uh, is your IT strong enough to achieve that? This is what we need to check. Finally, we would like to optimize the business continuity and identify innovations. Like for instance, right now, we all worked remote for two years because of an event that happened, but this is actually going to last. So taking the opportunity of having a huge change that happened in the company that needed to be changed because of, of something that has happened and we were resilient to that may become the new normal. And these identified innovation, we need to strengthen them by understanding the processes that lies beyond that, understanding the new risk, understanding the, understanding the new value streams, maybe we'll do business differently now, and understanding the feasibility in the, in the implementation. And of course, finally, establishing the plan to the future, understanding that these new opportunities that will arise will be uh, planned, will be architected, and we need to have a strong roadmap with strategy and execution that will, that will lead us to that. So this is what I wanted to, to, to tell you about, I would say the global presentation of the context. At Mega, we have worked on this project with some of our customers. We have a method in place to help strengthen the resiliency and agility of some capabilities. Do not hesitate to, to, to reach out to us. 
now will lead I will leave the, the stage to Nick, who is going to demonstrate for us this fourth step in the solution. That's great. Thank you for the intro, Yannick. So I will just share my screen in one moment. All right, so as Yannick had mentioned uh, in the introduction, my name is Nick Hatfield, and, and Elspeth mentioned it as well. I'm a pre-sales engineer here at Mega, so it's it's my job to walk you through uh, the platform that we sell to our customers. So this will be um, pretty quickly moving. We're going to cover a lot of ground um, pretty rapidly. So I encourage anyone, um, ask questions, submit questions. You can We can also follow up with you later on uh, if you want to take a deeper dive into uh, all the different features and functionalities and, and, and value that you can get out of this platform. So I'm just going to go camera off after my intro there. And assuming everyone can see my screen, what you see here is the main home screen for HopeX. So this is a tile-based interface. You can, you can move these tiles around. Um, any kind of report or visualization that you need quick access to can be placed here um, on, your, on your main home screen. And we also have uh, navigation on the left-hand side. So it's, it's always contextual. We provide role-based access, so I am accessing this as an IT business manager. That's a, that's a role that we provide out of the box. Um, the roles can be configured, and they can also be tailored to your specific needs. So if someone is heavily involved in building out um, business processes or value streams, we have a specific interface that they can use um, to, to log into the platform and, uh, and perform any of those changes as they need to. So to begin, we are on the subject of thinking about our um, our business capabilities. What is the most critical capabilities that we have? So with HopeX, you have the ability to describe that entire taxonomy from level one on downward, so level one to level two, level three business capabilities, and then you can actually assess these capabilities based on a, a number of factors. So what we're doing is we're thinking about the most critical factors that we have. You can see them listed out here, the business value, we're, we're thinking about the criticality, the efficiency, the effectiveness, and then also what's the financial impact. So if this if this capability were, were, innovate, were unavailable, what does that actually mean uh, financially? And then as I drill down here, I can display the, the legend and we can start to understand what we think about these capabilities based on the results of the assessments. So, for example, if we are uh, we're using the you know the example that Yannick had laid out, we're thinking about a a safe mode where maybe we need to ratchet up certain parts of the business and then and then ratchet down other areas. So when we start to think about that, we are looking at business capabilities that are that are that are high in business value. So they're the most critical capabilities that we have. And then we can start to think about that financial impact, um, the efficiency, the effectiveness, so that we can actually, in these different modes, we can actually maintain what we need and deliver to our customers. So we have the, we use the example in the intro that we can assign specific KPIs to our business capabilities, and then we can report on it. So here we're looking at the criticality uh, through the lens of the assessment. And then we can report on these KPIs as we need to. So what I've done is it's just a it's just a short report to show you the business capabilities. We talked about online ticket processing versus store ticket processing. So if we're making some kind of change and we decide that we're moving a lot of our business online and away from the actual physical location, well, well we're going to need to need to scale and we're going to need to need to make sure that our online ticket processing can actually keep up with that surge. So do we have uh, the applications, the the processes, we have everything that we need in order to actually scale. So in this view, what I've done is I've I've connected a specific KPI item to my business capability. So it's online ticket processing or the store ticket processing, and then I have two different modes of um, of, of operating: my normal mode and then my safe mode. So my normal mode, it's only 5,000 uh, is my total number of transaction, but we've got to scale that. Uh, because we're, we're we're switching our model here, and we actually now need to keep up with 10,000 uh, transactions uh, per day. So we can link that together, and then we can start to visualize this in even more meaningful ways. So Yannick had described the value stream. This is this is probably a, a familiar concept uh, to a lot of the people on the call. 
But a value stream is a way of describing from a customer centric point of view, the, the value or the services that we actually provide to our customers, whether it's internal or external, and then the specific sequence, the specific steps that we take. So in my example, my demo data is, uh, is dealing with an airport example. So it's the, it's the mega airport. And then specifically here, we're thinking about the services that we provide. So it's, it's around flight operations, the services for our passengers, um, how do we manage the crew and ramp operations. And then what's great about this is we can start to drill into it. So we're, we're thinking about these, these, uh, the ticketing that we need to issue, and then how do we keep up with all of the, the latest uh, departures and transfers and arrivals in terms of our baggage service here. So there's, it's all interrelated in terms of how we actually want to manage this. We can continue to drill down into these different areas. So for example, this provide baggage services. We get down to this view where we've linked the actual business capabilities here. So I had that, that online ticket processing. We're using that, and we could use this across any value stream, uh, but we're using that specific capability in our ticketing uh, when we provide these uh, given capability here. So we've linked that capability. It's the same business capability that we saw in our map, but then we can analyze it through the lens of the value stream. So, so everything that you see is an object-oriented repository. You can click into all the different areas. You can drill into it uh, and, then, and then uncover more information. So if I open up baggage management, for example, I have the results of my assessment. And then I also have linkages into IT or the, the process. So these are a list of all of the applications or the hardware or the business process. Uh, that we're actually using to fulfill this baggage management, uh, this, this need of the business. So for our online ticket processing, and we're thinking about how can we actually scale? Well, we have, the, um, we have these different applications or anything that's supporting it. We can link any fulfilling object here, and then we can actually drill into uh, any of these objects and then, and then start to understand um, what is the current state. So if I need to scale in order to keep up with the, the, the needs of the safe mode and the online ticketing, I'm already using airportmega.com today to manage, uh, to manage one piece of this. At the top, I have some of the key indicators about this application. So I'm looking at the functional support, the technical efficiency. So what I can see here very quickly is that while although it's, it, it looks like it's using some technologies that are either end of life or maybe there's some, some prohibited technologies that are linked here, the technical efficiency is actually really high and, and it provides a lot of different functionalities, which is all great for me because that means this could be an opportunity to actually scale this. So if I'm using, for example, some kind of on-prem or um, I'm thinking about a hybrid or maybe just going full cloud to host my application, I can describe that in detail here within HOPEX. So I have um, the ability to, to click and then open up the, the diagram and then I can look at the structure of my application, the deployment of my application in full detail. So in, in, this, full, in this view right here, uh, we're looking at the interaction. So I have these different services. I've got a front end. I've got my site service layer. We've got this data area over here. It's, it's the structure of my application. We're also looking at the data that's being exchanged. So this is my content. Um, all very useful information to the solution architect. So I can understand what these exchange contracts are. And then I can quickly pivot if I need to add some additional features or functionality. I can understand what these services are. I can compare them to other applications. And, and we can start to make the changes as we need to. Now I have two examples here. The first is looking at an on-prem deployment. So this would be my, my current state. So we've decided we need to scale to keep up with this, this need. This is the way that we are um, describing the deployment of this application today. So I've got my, my servers that I own with a front end and a back end. We have the technologies linked to it, but then we can also uh, design a, another future state. In this one, it's, it's, it's um, a deployment of this application where I'm using uh, Amazon here specifically, but we, we support Amazon, Google, and the Azure cloud service catalogs. So you can see we've got the official categories here, the official um, icons here. And this can also be built um, through a template. So you can build out templates of how you should deploy these applications. That way you can um, get to the actual the engineering and, and, and delivering on these solutions even faster. So we started with looking at the business capability, thinking in terms of what is the most critical business capability that we have. 
how do we scale to keep up with the with the you know with the, with the changes that happen uh, externally in our in our different environments? We can relate that to a value stream. We can drill into that value stream, understand how we are actually meeting those needs uh, through the business capability, and then those fulfillments uh, from IT, and then also from the business. And then we can get into the agile architecture. We can design out these future states, as you as you can see here, and and we have a deployable package so we can be faster about meeting the needs. Um, especially when it comes to the most critical business capabilities that we provide. So the next step that we can uh, that we can get into is how do we actually um, how do we actually manage this? So with this platform, we can go into the project portfolio management. So there's a there's a piece of this with any program within your agile um, within your agile department. We can describe these here in in full detail. So I have my my programs listed out. On my on my dashboard, so I've assessed them. I understand what my budget is. What's the benefit? We can perform a calculation for a return on investment. So this is a dashboard style view. We can also get into um, a roadmap of our programs. So this is a Gantt style view. It also shows me if I have any dependencies or or prerequisites. So when we need to keep up with the ever changing demands, if something is not on time, then we know we're not actually going to get to that transformation when we actually need it. So in, in this style of view, we have the program list, listed off to the left here. Um, a clear indicator, is it on time? Is it late? It, are there any dependencies? And then also the deliverable. So I have um, an application system here, but it could be a technology, it could be a business process, it could be any number of outcomes, any kind of deliverable uh, that we're describing here, and then when we should actually uh, deliver upon that. And then uh, similar to, to anything else that we saw so far, we can click on this, we can drill into it, um, we have social features here. So if I wanted to um, share a link directly with someone so that they can take a look at this, this architecture of this, of this application system, I can send that off to them. You can also um, get notifications. So I can, I can like this object, I can follow it. And I'll always know if something has been changed or, or updated or if there's any, any kind of you know, meaningful uh, value that's, that's, uh, that's changed there. So we can look at it from this perspective, and then we can also look at it through the lens of our business capabilities. So when I think about my projects, how are they actually impacting my capability map? So I select the, the, the same model that we were uh, looking at earlier to begin. Now I can add the projects here, and then I can see which projects are actually uh, impacting a change to my business capabilities. So um, just generically, green means a, a, um, a, some kind of innovation project. Yellow means we're making an enhancement. And then red means we're, we're decommissioning or we're, we're deleting something. So I have my example here for food and beverage management or baggage management. These are the projects that are ongoing, that are in flight to, to make that change. So we're making an, an enhancement, we're decommissioning, um, or we're delivering on some altogether new innovation. And then as I scroll down here, we have a table style view. So here are here is the business capability with all of the similar information that we saw earlier about our projects. So how does it align to our strategy? Does it provide significant business value? What is the cost? So we're visualizing these projects um, through the lens of our business capability. And then we have another um, Gantt style view that, that we can get into that will show us um, a roadmap of these most important, the most critical uh, projects that we have, and then how they relate to um, to our different transformation stages. So with the with the business architecture, you can describe uh, different phases. So that's what we have here. You see, it says baseline, customer satisfaction improvement stage. These are my stages. They have different objectives that I've described in my business motivation model. We'll look at that in just a moment. And that's where I can describe what, what, what kind of outcomes um, do we need and why are we actually trying to achieve that? So with this, we have our, our phase, our period of time, it's customer satisfaction improvement. In the gray, it's the project. So we want to, want to introduce a new application, uh, a new platform. We want to deliver upon um, some, some innovation here to this capability. And then we have the business capabilities linked to it as well. So food and beverage management, sales and services. These are all the business capabilities that we intend to actually make those enhancements to. And we can see when we intend to deliver upon it in a more global view. So it's a, it's a Gantt style view that shows you your most critical projects linked to the business capability that you're actually going to impact, which is of course linked to that, uh, that transformational uh, phase or period of time.
And then you can describe all of this with a, uh, with a model. So if I open up my strategy on a page diagram, this is where I can describe those transformation stages that we saw. So that's the, the big green box that you see. That's our, our step one, our step two, step three, et cetera, et cetera. And then I've described my goal and I link my objective to the goal. So here in, in my example, the goal is to deliver exceptional business performance. And then we describe how exactly do we go about doing that? So it's, it's focused on our, on our passengers. How do, we, um, how do we actually get to them so they'll, they'll spend more money, for example, or how can we provide uh, greater automation? You can, of course, link um, goals to, to multiple objectives, and then we can use these as realizers in our capability model so that we say, when we're actually going to achieve this KPI to scale to 10,000 uh, tickets processed per day, we have a goal and we have an objective that describes that, and then we can link that specifically to our capability model with that project deliverable. So how do we intend to scale to get to 10,000 uh, tickets processed per day? But well, we're going to use this airport mobile application because of the results of the assessment, the ability to scale it. We have a design in place to actually deploy it more successfully on the cloud, which is actually going to get us to, to where we want to be based on the strategy, the business architecture that we've described here on our strategy on a page diagram. So I know I covered a lot of ground um, very, very quickly there. As I mentioned at the intro, uh, we can go into more depth on any one of these topics. Any one of these could be a, a full presentation, but just something else to keep in the back of your mind is we also have um, a global perspective of, of any, any artifact, any object, data point, report that you are gathering in the platform, in the HOPEX platform, and then you can use a website like this. So this is a, a static website generated by HOPEX and any view can be stored here, including uh, CIO dashboard views. So with this, I have a high level uh, perspective on, for example, my application evolution. What, what life cycle information do I have about my applications and where are they at currently? So I can move my mouse around here from 2025 to 2023. I see exactly, based on my strategy, how many applications will belong to a given stage. So are they in production? Are they in retirement? We can also think about the uh, business capability. So I've got several different capabilities listed out here. I have the direct link to the, to the application, for example. So if I want to understand how I'm fulfilling financial management, for example, I have a list of all of my, all of my applications just available here at my fingertips. So I will, um, I will stop here and I can um, hand it back over to Yannick. Um, again, uh, feel free to, to ask questions and take part in the dialogue, but I appreciate everybody for, for joining the webinar today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick, for this presentation. It was really good to see that when it comes to laying the ground for the agility, resiliency analysis, where do we need to focus our efforts on the enterprise architecture team has really a seat to the table by planning those business capabilities, managing the value streams, being able to manage strategic roadmap and get visibility into business and IT assets that will support that. I think it is really key to have that global map in, in every company in order to be able to understand where to focus the effort and plan the effort of being more resilient and more agile whenever we need to be. All right. So, what I wanted to, to, to conclude on today is that what Nick has demoed for us today is what we call HOPEX, and this is what we call the next-gen platform. Nick showed us a lot of reports, data today, lots of elements that uh, might be required or not to complete a full, a full analysis. And it can be sometimes difficult to start somewhere and to say, okay, how, where do we start to really achieve those results that are great? We at Mega are, have a, what we call a, an outcome-driven approach where we want to be able to understand what you need to do, and to do at the beginning and focus our efforts where we need to be. So we do a lot of automated EA, so automatically discover application, data, processes. We auto-populate the repository for industry content, such as business capability maps. We have a question on that in the question box, uh, meaning that we have ready-to-use processes, 
business capability maps from industry that will help us uh, accelerate the effort on this. We automatically render models and diagrams, meaning that you don't have to build all the diagrams that Nick showed us today. You can auto-generate them based on data that you will import. All of that to accelerate time to value. We also want to be very connected. We understand that, that the EA tool shouldn't be in its ivory tower somewhere. We have to have an EA tool that is connected to a CMDB, to a risk management system, to a project management system as well. That is very important to, uh, to, to, uh, to have a global perspective on the enterprise. And finally, we saw a couple of reports today. We have plenty others to help you make smart decisions. Smart EA is about recommending you some uh, aspects, for instance, based on some criticality of your capability. What kind of application should you look at first in order to, uh, to be more scalable, more robust, and making sure that you, you, you protect yourself against any resiliency or agility issues. Finally, my last slide before I will move to uh, the questions. Uh, Hopex is available for a free trial. So if you have any questions, any, any points you would like to test or your data on, you can directly connect to our 30-day trial system on our, on our, on our website, mega.com. Ask for a free trial and we'll be happy to help you. And all the results that Nick showed you today, you can actually see it by yourself. So very important to, uh, to, to check that today. And if you have any questions, we'll be here to help. We're here to handhold all our prospects in order to gain some value. Okay, um, let me just check the time. We are on time, perfect. So we, are, we have a couple of questions that have been asked in the question box. If I can find it right here. View questions. All right, perfect. So we have a first question that was asked right there. I'm just trying to pull it out. Okay, that's better. So are there generic industry capability maps and value stream provided in the tool? So we provide generic capability maps that you can find by industry. So uh, we are working with the Business Architecture Guild, for instance, so that you can import those, uh, the, the, those capability maps in the solution and start working on them. They will be your content, so you can actually connect anything you need to these capability maps. It's it's yours. Uh, and for value streams, so we work as well with APQC to help us uh, to help us uh, import a structure of processes at a high level point of view that can also be used for value stream mapping. Uh, but we can have a longer discussion about that if needed. Please feel free to contact us. We'll be more than happy to help. Second question, uh, does the tool automatically extract any structure information from applications, in, for instance, ERD, technical architecture diagrams, et cetera, et cetera? So um, to that, quest to, to that uh, question, the answer is at any point, if there is any structured data that we can leverage, we can leverage it. So we have strong APIs, GraphQL interfaces, out of the box, any, ki any kind of structure you can have, we will be able to import it. That's one thing. The second piece is that uh, we are also able to scan with two partners of Mega called BIMI and Ericent. We, get, we are able to scan traffic of your SaaS application usage and create automatically a SaaS catalog inventory based on your usage. And with Ericent, we're able to scan your systems, servers, uh, technologies, applications, to understand what you have and how you deploy some of the applications today. So yes, we definitely have uh, something to say in what we call the discovery of assets to make your life easier on that. Another question that we have is, how does Customer journey add value to this effort, right? So we didn't show the the customer journey piece uh, today, but it is definitely playing a big role. Uh, as as well as we had before the value streams, 
we are also able to connect capabilities to customer journey and basically this will give you another lens it's not about resiliency and agility i would say it's more about the customer's perspective on your capabilities so at some point if you have a customer that is, that is unhappy and that will actually uh, not like a step that it takes with you in his journey with with your company you can understand which capability is supposed to deliver something for him that does not and which kind of again assets processes are supporting that to make the changes on this so yes in the global effort customer journey will definitely play a role in that and finally a last question uh, is hopex available on prem or on sas uh, so hopex is available in both uh, so we manage uh, on prem deployment as well as sas deployment it really depends on your preferences Okay, this was uh, the last question that we had today in the in the question box. So the only thing that is left for me to do right now is to uh, thank you all very much for your participation in the webinar. You will get a link to the video of this webinar. If you liked it, you can share it with your colleagues and and talk about that. And feel free. To reach out to us mega.com request a trial request to talk to us we'll be more than happy to dig into these topics with you and 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 help you i would say set up capability planning projects in order to enhance your resilience energy thank you very much everybody and have a wonderful day